Let's say that we're building an e-commerce application and that we're ready to fill up our database with a lot of test data to better simulate production. Because normally when we're just building our application in development, we are just adding a couple records in the database to test the functionality. But that's not a very good way to simulate how our application might behave and look in a more production-like environment with a lot of data. One way to do that is just to manually fill in our database records with a lot um, through the web interface. But that's not really ideal, it's a lot of work and so on. So let's try to automate this process. So let's add a new rake task to handle the population of our database. Um, we could do that by adding a file under lib tasks directory. And let's just call it populate.rake. And in here, let's just make a namespace called db. And then we'll uh, give the task a name called populate. And we'll load our Rails environment in here as well, so that we have access to all of our models. And I'm also going to just add a little description here um, called erase and fill database. So let's say you want to make a hundred products in your database. So we might do something like this, where we do product.create 100 times and just fill, fill it with some data. But this is not very efficient. For one thing, it's going to go through all the validations and callbacks and so on in your model. And it's also going to just make data that kind of looks all the same. Instead, we want to randomize it a bit. So to do this, I'm going to show you a new gem I've been working on called Populator. To install the gem, it's really easy. Just run gem install populator. And then we can load up our gem instead of our rake task by just calling require populator. So the first thing we want to do here is just clear out some existing records in our database. And I'm actually going to work on three different models here. One is called category, and then product, and then person. And for each of these, we'll just call delete all on them to uh, clear them out of the database. Let's first focus on the category model and just fill up our categories table with some data. So we can call category.populate, and this populate is a method that the populator gem gives us. And you could just pass an integer here representing um, how many records you want to create. Let's create 20. And then it'll pass um, an object into the block, which you can use to set attributes. So we pass category in there, and we can call category.name equals some value here. But we don't want all the categories to be called foo, so let's um, randomize it a bit. And populator also gives us a word generator. You can call populator.words, and let's say we want to generate between um, one and three words for a category name. And we can uh, titleize this, which is a method that Rails gives us through um, active support. And there we go. Now this will generate 20 categories with um, a random name for each. Now category is associated with product with a has many associations. So a category has many products. And we want to populate our products here as well. So for each of the categories, we can generate a certain number of products for that category. So we can call product.populate directly inside of the category block. And we want to give a value. Maybe let's say there's a range between 10 and 100 products for each category. And um, it'll just select one value, one random value between that range. OK, now we need to define this association somehow. So we can say the product's category ID is just equal to the category's current category's ID. And then um, I'm just going to paste in the rest of these values here since um, so you don't have to watch me type it all. But really, we could just generate a random name just like we do for a category. We can say up to five words for this one. And a random description, we can use a new method called sentences for popula that Populator provides just to generate between two and 10 sentences um, to make a decent sized description. And if we pass an array to a value like this here, it will randomly select one entry of the array for each product. So um, one product might be $4.99, one product might be $100, and so on. And if we pass a range for the time or any kind of other value, um, it will randomly select a value out of here. So um, here it'll just set the created at time to anywhere from two years to now until now. Next, let's generate um, some people. So 
go to our person model, populate that with, let's say, 100 people, and we could probably do more, but let's just keep it simple for now. Now, when you're generating people records, it's a little bit more difficult because you need to take into account that an email address will have a certain format, a zip code, and phone numbers have a certain format, and look to them, and so on. And for this kind of problem, if we want to randomly generate those values, there's an excellent gem out there called Faker that can do this for us. So we can just run gem install Faker to uh, install it. And we'll need to load this gem in here as well. Okay, and for this I'm just going to paste in some more code here. And as you can see, see the Faker gem adds a lot of methods which we can use to generate um, person's name, company, email address, a phone number, uh, a city street, a state and zip code, and so on. Um, a lot of good stuff in there to generate really realistic looking uh, data. Oh, and I just noticed a mistake I made in here. The creation date for the product says two years from now, but that doesn't really make any sense. It really makes more sense to say two years ago until now. So you're probably wondering about that. Okay, so once you're all done with writing the rake task, just run DB populate command, and you may want to specify the Rails environment here if you don't want to run in uh, development mode and completely erase your database. This will take just a couple of seconds to run, but once it's done, you'll have a database full of uh, data. So let's try reloading this page and see how it works. Well, it looks like our products are filled now. We have a lot of products and um, random prices, random names, random categories. The release date, the creation date is random as well. It's just that we're sorting by recent products first, so it just so happens that um, they're closer to today's date. But it looks like it's working. Now let's check out the people and uh, see what those look like. As you can see, our pretty realistic data here. We got the person's name, email address, a company name, and address, phone number, and so on. So um, pretty cool how the Faker Gem generates all this realistic, accurate-looking data. And that's it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful, and go fill up your database. If you enjoyed this episode, you might be interested in my latest episode in the Everyday Active Record series that I'm doing with the Pragmatic Programmers. You can find it at pragmatic.tv. Uh, this one is on optimizing database queries, and it's just $5. And um, really, it includes not only showing you how to populate a database, but also you doing that in the staging environment, benchmarking, and optimizing your queries on the database. So check that out if it looks like it interests you. This episode is sponsored in part by GitHub. One of the best ways to improve yourself as a programmer is to collaborate with others, share your code, and read other code. In my opinion, GitHub is the best way to do that. Check them out at github.com and share your code. Also sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. They offer high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.